Hey everybody, welcome to the second Dev Diary for Beaker. Uh, by request, I got myself a better mic, so hopefully you can hear me a little better this time around. I'm going to talk about the hyperdrive file system today. Um, imagine if the web, rather than having websites that are just um, places on servers, you know, that you visit, imagine if instead of websites you had a file system. And rather than websites, we have what we call hyperdrives. And these are basically networked folders. They have their own URL. Uh, they can be uh, shared over the network. Off of that, we are building an entire applications environment with Beaker, and that's what I'm going to be showing today, is how that file system uh, works with applications in Beaker and how we plan to, to build things on it. Let's start by taking a look at the file system application here. This is our um, sort of our files explorer app, really. And when you open it, you find yourself at your personal file system. And your personal file system is private. Um, it's kept off the network. Now, eventually it'll sync between your devices, but right now it's just kept completely off the internet. And, um, and it's kind of like your personal anchor into the hyperdrive web, where um, you save all your personal information there, and if it's private, you save it directly as files on this. But then you can do this thing called mounting, and mounting is taking some other hyperdrive that exists on the internet and then adding it as a subfolder. So right here at the top, you can see the public uh, folder here is actually a mount to another hyperdrive. And whenever I interact with this thing, I'm going to use the command line here, um, it looks exactly like any other folder. I've got these five folders here, data, library, public, settings, users, and the public one, it looks like another folder, but it's actually a mount. So if I um, look inside of it, I see the files and folders that contain it, but if I double click on it to open it, I actually just go to a totally new address because it's a completely separate hyperdrive. This mounting tool is really pretty powerful. It lets us... Um, compose together lots of different hyperdrives to create one sort of personalized file system. So whatever I have at slash public, that's my identity drive. That's the one that I share with people to say, you know, this is who I am, this is my um, profile, so to speak. Um, so if I go to, to public, we, uh, th we now know this is, you know, this is the place where all of my public identity is located. This is all my files that I'm sharing with the world. Um, inside the, the library folder, it's a similar story. These are mounts to all the different sort of projects I have. So I got a drive here full of my cool files. I got a test website here. And if I double click on it, I'll go to that website. And uh, let's close the command line there, but jump back to the Explorer view. And like everything else, we're looking at that test website, but it's just a bunch of files. Index.md right here. And if I go back to the website view, there's the index.md working like a website normally does. So the hyperdrive system is like this underlying file system of the web that, that Beaker is creating. And you have websites, just like you normally do, but it's on top of this file system. So I have to go to the website view whenever I visit it. But if I want to look at the files, I can go to the Files Explorer and see the files of a, one of these hyperdrive websites. All right. So this is pretty handy. It creates a kind of, because we're creating um, all of our, um, you know, the user's experience is through this private drive where you're mounting together all the different locations that are interesting to you. Um, so, you know, inside of uh, uh, the data directory, we have the unwalled garden information. Inside of my public directory, I have my personal hyperdrive mounted that I share with everybody that's public. Um, and inside, inside of the friends folder, I have mounts to all my friends. And so the path is actually um, significant. If you want to list all the friends that I have, you just need to do an ls inside of my slash public slash friends folder. So let's just demonstrate that again with the command line here. Let's go to my root. So we got data, library, public settings, and users. So I'm thinking if I'm building an application and I want to say I'd like to get a f list of the user's friends, easy. You do a listing of public friends. And there you see you got Alice and Bob. And those are mounts to their drives. So I can ls into Alice and I'll see her files. ls into Bob and I'll see his files, right? So the file system is becoming not just a... Um, place to store data, but it's actually directly meaningful each of these different paths. If I want to pull out all of my public bookmarks, I'm going to do an ls in public and inside the data directory, 
These are all stored under the Unwalled Garden namespace and bookmarks. And I've got one right there for this blog post that I thought was interesting. If I click on it, it'll take us there. Just a little JSON file pointing to that, you know, giving that bookmark information. So I know that public data Unwalled Garden bookmarks, that is the path for bookmarks that are being stored by Beaker. And if I wanted to make an application that renders those bookmarks, I would just do an ls of that directory and display the files. But those are my public bookmarks. If I want my private ones, I just don't include the public part of it. There's a mirror data uh, folder structure. And those are my private bookmarks there. I got it one to this experimental URL scheme we didn't end up using, so don't pay attention to that bookmark. Uh, and then here's one to Hi uh, Y Combinator's uh, Hacker News site, because, you know, I go to it. All right, so, yeah, so that is the sort of, um, there's a sort of semantic meaningfulness to the paths here. Um, we're encoding uh, uh, a meaning in there, and it's sort of a typing system sense. Let's talk about what we would do if we wanted to build an application, because there's one more piece to this. We have all these sort of semantically relevant um, paths, but let's say we wanted to make an application for uh, a social media feed. How would we do that? Well, we would want to grab all of the feed posts, which are just files, on your network's computers. Um, or excuse me, on your network's hyperdrive. So let's jump over to a little application I threw together for this. And let me do a little reset here. Okay, this right here is the part of this little application that I want us to focus on. Everything else is boilerplate for getting the output of this function um, onto the page. Navigator.filesystem.query. So navigator.filesystem is a way to access your uh, private file system. So I'll just show navigator.filesystem.readdeer. And get rid of some of this boilerplate. And there we go. So, OK. That's our home directory. Pretty obvious. Well, uh, let's take a look at what this query function does. It's kind of similar to read deer, but it's a little more powerful. It's designed to query against multiple different folders at once using this path input. So we'll use the sort of same um, idea. Let's list out everything that's inside of the um, root folder. And that's a little bit Big, so I'm going to use my little helper function here, my nice and function, to uh, call down the output a little bit. And let's actually just take it down to the type in the path. Okay, so that is a cut down version of what the query output shows you. But it shows us that we got a library, settings, public data, users, and it's telling us the type of each of those entries. Um, four directories. One, two, three, four. And amount, right? And if I wanted to include a little more data from the output, let's include the mount entry. So most of them don't have a mount, but the one that does, that's the information about where it's pointing to. So this query function is really powerful. We can use this to pull out information about the file system um, across multiple different paths really easily. So we're querying the current, you know, the root of my file system, but what about the public um, uh, location, right? Like my public identity, what's in there? All right, we've got a directory, file, file, directory, right? So we can, it, it works by a globbing pattern. It's, if I just did slash public, it would actually just tell me about slash public, right? Um, if I do slash public slash star, that's gonna tell me about everything that matches that pattern. Well, not only can you do it for an individual um, path, but you can actually do it for more than one path. So let's get our friends involved and include Alice in the results. So now we can see that in addition to my files up here, we also have Alice's files down here. She's got a directory and then three files of her own. And shoot, let's go ahead and pull in Bob. <laughs> a little syntax error. There we go. And there's Bob's folders as well, uh, files and folders as well. Good. Two, three, four, five, and six. So 
what we have been able to do here is query not just my information, but because of the mounts, we can query my friend's information. And if we go to that folder, we can see there they are, Alice and Bob, right? Just the two friends of mine that I mounted. If I open up one of their drives, there's their data. So this query function is a way for us to be able to create an aggregation across this view of the hyperdrive world that I've created for myself. And the globbing is actually a little more powerful than I'm showing here because I'm having to specify each individual friend right now, but if I wanted to just get my information and then all of my friends' information, I could use another glob. So rather than specking each one individually, I can just put a star. And now we're getting all of the files that are inside of Alice's and Bob's uh, hyperdrives as well as my own. So that's pretty handy. And if you wanted to, you could even go kind of recurse your way down this social graph. So this is going to show my information and my friend's information, but what about their friends, right? The friends of friends. Well, we could just add another layer to this. And we're not going to get anything because they don't have any friends, but it would look like that. And the query runs fine, even though there's not going to get any hits. So my information, my friend's information, and my friend's of friend's information. So you can see how these paths are becoming semantically meaningful. So now if I wanted to aggregate together, let's say, all of my bookmarks, private and public, as well as my friend's bookmarks, I might write a query that looks like this. Let's bring them all out. So bookmarks are stored in data on wall.garden bookmarks star dot json. And that folder structure is mirrored in every one of them. So it'd be like that. And I have a syntax error. OK, so that got our private ones. What about our public ones? One too many stars. There we go. So those are all of my bookmarks. Unfortunately, none of my friends have shared any bookmarks with me yet. But because we know this predetermined path structure, we know that these two are private and this one is public. And we know that because we know the root hyperdrive is kept off the network, but public points to a mount that's on the network. Uh, let's look at another example that I have prepared here. I have this feed folder. So you could imagine building like a social media application off of this. Um, where you're going to use all the files that are dumped into the feed folder. You just aggregate them together, organize them by the most recently published, and then render them in line. And we're probably going to actually build this application pretty soon. Uh, but I'll just show how mechanically that query would work. So uh, you would take, let's just say we, we're not going to use the data folder, even though that would be smart, because the data folder is where you like namespace um, the types of information. Um, topic for another dev diary, but let's just use the feed folder and we'll take anything, any kind of file. So images, markdown, text, whatever. And we want to get from our friends as well. So that's our query. And maybe we were looking to have more content, so we'll also get friends of friends. Okay. So that's our query. And now we got, I have one hello.md and Alice has her uh, hello.txt. And we'll probably, since this is a uh, feed application, we want to sort it by C time with the uh, most recent first, so that needs to be reversed. And we'll put a limit of like 50 because you know we need to be able to paginate. Let's see, is it order or sort? It might be sort. There we go. So now if I wanted to uh, turn this into a, a, a feed, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it would be like we do a for let item of res. No, do we want to do it that way? Let's do uh, let's do var posts equals await promise dot all res dot map item, and we're gonna do a asynchronous read off of every one. file item.path and we are just going to dump it all out onto the page. All right, now what do we got wrong? I expect it 
left. Oh, right, they're not all JSON. <laughs> In fact, none of them are JSON. So get rid of that. There we go. Uh, so we have two posts. There's Alice's and there's mine. That's a little hard to tell what's going on, so let's get them inside of... Uh, um, there we go. So there's Alice's hello.txt, and there's my hello.md. Uh, so there we go. We are like with uh, eh, about 20 lines of code. We have the mechanisms for querying and uh, creating a um, really crummy social media application. And if you've been following me for a while, you know <coughs> that's my measure of how well we're doing. If we can write a really crummy social media application like no time flat, I know that we're on the right path. So what's really nice about this mechanism, this query function, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is that it's enabled us to um, move most of the way things work into user land. I'm still working on the implementation. That's what I'm going to be doing this week. But um, things like comments and tagging and voting and things like that, that's all going to be inside of user land using this query function. And there was a while where I believed that we were not going to be able to do that. I thought that we were going to have to have an indexer built into the browser. Uh, and I, I talked about this pretty publicly, where it would crawl around looking at paths like these um, and putting them into a SQLite table, creating a pre-computed index that you could query against. Um, but eventually over time, we started to kind of wrap our heads around how this more simplified uh, API can work. And I'm really glad we did because the, the crawler, that indexer inside of Beaker was a little complicated. This mechanism is uh, simpler, uh, not just to implement, but also to maintain. I was able to delete a whole lot of code and move it all into user land um, and take it out of the core of Beaker. Um, which also means everything is way more flexible, which is good. It means that people can build better applications without having to wait on us. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the query function performs, um, but uh, that's sort of something that I am pretty confident we can improve iteratively. Um, if we find out that we do need more pre-computed indexes, we can always create those. Um, uh, so we will see how that goes. But I'm leaning towards flexibility first and performance second on this, and um, hopefully that won't bite me really badly. Interested to see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to let that be a wrap on uh, the dev diary. So uh, again, I today I was talking about the file system, the idea of this global file system, and how you have a personal uh, drive that ends up composing itself out of all these different hyperdrives that are part of this global network. And then I talked a little bit about how this um, composed file system can be queried to create applications. Um, and so we're going to keep on uh, working on that and uh, finding interesting ways to put these tools to use. Uh, so I'll see you all next week with the next Dev Diary. Thank you uh, very much for tuning in. Catch you later.